What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm filming this, or recording this, uh, in uh, Groove, I think it's called Texas, where there's the uh, a cross that was put up. Let me show it to you real quick here. You'll see it. A giant cross. Uh, it's been here a while. I don't know, at least 20 years. I remember uh, my wife and I came here uh, 20 years ago uh, or so. And when we saw this and so uh, there's Nina and and Norwegia uh, or Tiana uh, Taya um, and and so the 10 minute thought today as we're continuing in Matthew uh, and I hope you found a church to go worship at and spend some time singing and praising and talking to God uh, but the thought that I want to share as is a continuing looking into Matthew uh, I want to show you this this continues now in Matthew chapter 5 Picking up at verse 21, it says, You've heard that it was said, the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders shall be subject to judgment. But I tell you, that anyone who is angry with a brother or a sister will be subject to judgment. And anyone who says to his brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool will be subject to the fire of hell and this would have been a radical conversation and think about this conversation unto itself right this idea that he's speaking who's he speaking to well, now we pointed that out they're po possibly pharisees and sadducees there but it's a group of people some of them more grievous public sin and some of them just a broken and an outcast and he's speaking sitting there on the side of a mountain. It's kind of like where I'm right now, a little bit. Not a very big mountain. It's, it's a panhandle of Texas, or panhandle. And as he's speaking to him, and he had just got done saying in verse 20, unless you're more righteous than the Pharisees. And it didn't, it, it connected like, wow, we cannot be that. And, and then there's this moment or this statement after saying, that, well, you better be more righteous than the Pharisees. And then he says, you've heard that it's said, do not commit murder. It may be, at least when I hear it, they're, he's speaking to them and they're thinking, oh, well, at least I haven't. You know, I haven't committed murder. And so maybe a, a, a slight moment of comfort even to say, well, I'm, I'm, at least I'm not that person. And he does this thing, this new covenant, this new contract, this new constitution. He says, I'm going to take this to a place you don't understand. You've heard that it said the old law, don't murder. Like, and you think you're doing good. You think you're righteous. And we'll show you more of this uh, later on in Peter, where Peter's going to say that same thing. He, he puts gossipers and murderers in the same boat. But when Jesus flips this on his head and says, but I tell you. Now this is at verse 22. Again, I have already read that, but I tell you. That if anyone is angry with a brother or sister, he's subject to judgment. And the question of why, why in the world would Jesus say this? Why has he added judgment to anger? Some of them might have felt they even had some righteous anger that might have been wronged by some of the religious. They hadn't been loved. But what he's doing is he's showing him, look, this was, this was the design. This constitution, this life, this place in heaven with Christ, this what Jesus wants to do with them not only affects the outside, but it starts with the inside. And, and he goes to anger. Now we'll talk more about the idea of righteous anger and what that looks like. We saw that even in Jesus. You can go look at that when he cleared the temple. When clearing the temple, he even he, he made a whip and turned tables. But when he got to the, the little doves inside of a cage, he says, get these doves out of here. If he would have turned those over, could have killed them. There was anger. But the anger, he's not doing that when he's being attacked. And, in fact, as I'm sitting here, and, and the reason for the cross, the reason for these crosses here. You see, Jesus wasn't angry 
because he was going to be there. He was angry for how they treated the thieves. He was angry for how they treated the broken. And as you ponder through God's word and as you read his word and start seeing it, it it's the outcast and the uncared for and the unloved that Jesus reaches out for and loves. He says, that, he says, I didn't come for the healthy. I came for the sick. The perspective though, in reading the Sermon on the Mount, he's trying and, and he is getting them to understand we are all sick. Didn't matter where you stood near the cross. If you were to the left or to the right or even down below or even far away. And that's the point of this sermon. And I'm going to keep saying this over and over again because I think that's the, the linchpin to the message of Christ is without Christ, you can do nothing and I can do nothing. Now, with Christ, you, then you start looking at your life and going, well, maybe I don't need to be so angry. Well, but what if someone wrongs you? You know, I'm going to be honest here. I don't share, uh, I, I want to share a lot on this, but I don't want to, I want this to be about here, but life's been tough lately. And there's been these moments in my life, I've had a lot of people even say to me, Robert, you have the right to be angry. And I'm like, I, I don't. And, and I bet everyone that's watching this could have something in their life. They're thinking, well, so-and-so hurt me or, so-and-so did something to me, or I was wronged, or I wasn't thought of, or I wasn't cared for, and then Jesus lovingly looks at us on the cross. One of my favorite stories, and we just have a moment, but I'm going to tell you about those two guys on the cross. See, Scripture says that at one point, both of them were mocking Jesus. And while Jesus hung on the cross, pulling himself up for every breath. And, and you've got to understand that. Come with me. I want to let point this out. So this is how this worked is as Jesus hung on the cross, you got to see what this was. So as he hung on the cross, his nail nails running through his hands, pulling himself up at every breath, feet nailed to the cross, pulling himself up. Did it look like this? I don't know. But he pulls himself up on the cross and over time he begins to speak to these thieves. And in one moment, instead of being angry, instead of speaking to the crowd to attack them and to the Roman guards, he says to our Lord, my God, please forgive them. They have no idea what they're doing. And for, for Jesus on the cross to say that to God is amazing. But what I find even more amazing is at some point in these hours on the cross, Jesus preaches to the thief who earlier was mocking him. And the thief defends Jesus from the other thief and turns to Jesus as best as he could. And I love this even depicted in this art here. Do you see it? And he says, Jesus, I mocked you. Jesus, in the midst of where you should have been angry for you, you, you spent that energy on me. And he said, remember me. With such love and such grace, Jesus says, I tell you today, you will be in paradise. He hung there on the cross for the work was done and all he needed next to do is relinquish his life. Scripture says that he laid down his life and he picked it back up, but he was waiting for the final one. I hope you're having a blessed day. Again, get into your word daily. Fight those the, the desires of, of this world to, to tell you and understand it's not to earn a salvation. 
but to live in the righteousness that comes from Christ. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Not in uh, Texas. We'll be back in Salina, Kansas. It'll be even colder. I wore shorts yesterday. That was awesome. Have a blessed day. Bye.